You all right? Mm-hmm. I'm suddenly in the mood for some milk tray. I don't know why. You look like the milk tray man. <laughs> <laughs> he wore a turtleneck. Yes, there we go. Keep this that is a, a half set. No, but it's very similar, isn't it? And he had a beard and dark hair. In fact, look into the camera over my shoulder and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison for YouTube. Jordan or the milk tray man? Go on, give me a soft centre. <laughs> you, you're wearing another rugby jersey. Well, it's sort of rugby jersey-esque, yes. You know at this time of year I like to slip into something rugby-related. Mm, you do. Brings back all those <laughs> childhood memories, done it, from school. We were a rugby-playing school, yes. What position were you in the rugby team? <laughs> Bottom. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sex in My Bath. No, wait for my laugh to finish before you start the episode. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sex and My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, is there ever a bad time to channel your inner Wendy? How long is too long before replying to WhatsApp messages? Well, leave it like a year, dear. <laughs> you, you leave it about a year. Two weeks. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert and TikToker. No, we're not, Jordan North radio presenter. I'm more luxury condo, you're more drongo. I don't know what that means, but it's from Jack, so... Well, it could be derogatory. Probably. Have we checked that? What is a drongo? Drongo. Sounds Australian. It does it sound does Australian. Oh, uh, yeah, fucking it's drongo. A bird. It's a bird. Exactly, so it might be derogatory. Bird is in that flies. Yes. Because you know what Australians are like? No offence to any Aussies. My, my Graham works with, I think we've talked about mm, this. Yes. Graham works with Aussies. And even he thinks what they say and, is a little bit offensive. Yeah, and my dad's like, you know, we're in army. Not exactly what you'd call woke. <laughs> and he's like, bloody hell, George. Some of the stuff they come out with. The, the word drongo is used in Australian English as a mild form of insult, meaning idiot or stupid fellow. The usage derives from an Australian racehorse of the same name. Oh, you bloody drongo! Where's that from? Mm. Okay. You bloody drongo! Well, now we know. Um, we got a new bottle of De Bonnet. Yeah, because Williams you... drank half of all the other no, ones. No, would you like to uh, open the De Bonnet for me, please? Um, no, all the, as we said on last week's episode, we were running out and we had 12 bottles of De Bonnet in Manchester and Stu, our exec, or cha chairman emeritus, Chairman Emeritus. He and I in the Westfield car park, he put the D in the back of my boot. I've sent the D down to you, boys. It's on the way now, it is. In the boot of the car. Oh, you've had a good week. <laughs> That's stupid. What's he, Chairman Emeritus? That's, I think, what you decided to call him. Chairman Emeritus. Yeah. Which I think means he doesn't do anything, but he does. He does an awful lot. For those of you that... Um, because we're still getting a lot of new listeners at the moment. Yeah. A gin and de bonnet is... Breakfast. <laughs> yeah, basically. It was the queen, the late queen and the late queen mother's favourite drink. Yes. Uh, it's gin, any gin you want. Loads of people ask us what gin, any gin. A mm. good gin. Gordon's is fine. And the Bonnet is a French aperitif. It's a bit like a port. Yes, but it's lighter. It's not as heavy. It's best served with ice and a slice of orange or lemon. There is a, our recipe is in our book, by the way, and actually one of my favourite bits in the book is the fact I have used the possessive plural on rather than put so obviously the queen mother was elizabeth and the queen that died last year was elizabeth so i have written it was a fav favorite of the late queen's elizabeth like surgeons general uh, you don't have surgeon generals you have surgeons general and so queen's elizabeth is he gonna keep going <laughs> it's one of my favorite bits in the I book he's gonna tell him to stop you can pre-order that <laughs> riveting book uh, it gets better after that. Sexinmyboss.com forward slash book. You can pre-order it. There's get, lots of advice in the book. It is an advice book, we should actually say. Get your pre-orders in soon. Yes. Because it's coming out very soon and we want to get on the Sunday Times bestsellers list. So please help us. Okay. Please. I know that sounds picky. Well, talking of the book, should we toast all our lovely new friends at Clay's, which is the printers in Suffolk? Oh, we, what a day. What a day it was. To our friends at Clay's. Thank you. And Penguin Random House. Indeed, yes. <laughs> There you go. Um, mm. But they all 
Um, were, I mean, we met so many of them, and some of them were at new Gene Divas, some of them were existing Gene Divas. It was lovely to see you print our book, and also nice that also you know existing Gene Divas work at the printers uh, that are then printing the book. So you can so you can see what happened at the printers on socials. Go and have a look on all our socials. We there. took self shoot Alex with us. It was it was a brilliant day. I mean, it was really emotional. I, it it really was, and to see our actual book that we have we have worked pretty hard on it. We have. We've yes. been working on it since January. Mm-hmm. Like to see it being printed was amazing. Yeah, and like you forget how many people now listen to this podcast. It's mad. Do you remember AD we met? Yes, who's like worked in the factory. Yeah, I know. This, and this proper burly blow, lovely lad. He went, "All right, boys, I'm a massive Gene Diva. I am." Not can sure that sign, was his accent. Can you sign my book? I was like, "Of course." I know that was self shoot. Sat Alex, weren't it? Yeah. <laughs> we had taxi driver, police. Yes. Oh, we had taxi driver, police on the train. Oh, yes. Yes. The two coppers. Off, off that, duty. That had just finished their night shift. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. It's mad. But seeing it printed, it's, it's coming out very Everyone soon. Everyone who looked after us, gorgeous, lovely people, were very excited. And uh, nice it's made in England as well, printed oh, in England. Yeah, sorry as well if I was being a bit moody on the train. <laughs> moody on the train? What? I mean, <laughs> a seven o'clock train, so which presumably means you have to get up at 5.30. Where, in that grand scheme of things, would Jordan North be moody? Just leave me alone. We did. Right. We I did. know, but self-shoot Alex then. <laughs> what are you up to this week then, George? Oh, yeah. not today, Alex. You seen uh, any of the F1 then? Oh, not today, please. No, I'm joking. I was actually... I, was actually ch- I wasn't that bad. I wasn't. Ben, oh. ben Zenner and I had a lovely time on our table. We just left who you. Want the, like, who wants to chat at that time in the morning? Who? Normal, even Ben, and he's not a morning person, was, was chatty. What worries me is, though, I've made it no secret, my ambition is to do the breakfast show one day. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> is, am I going to be any good? But to be fair, my brother, who used to do the breakfast show on Radio Bristol, awful in the mornings. I'm te- yeah. I think- like, uh, and I always was continually stunned that he could be ch- jolly on the radio. And the same with well, you when you've covered breakfast. Small talk. I'm not. I'm on this week. Are you? Well, yeah. But small talk. Good luck, just everyone. Just at that time in the morning. Piss off. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Could you not do the first hour? Maybe tomorrow on your breakfast show. Can you go do like the first hour and just like, hi, right, and just do songs back to back for the hour whilst you wake up? I think it could be a new, fresh approach to breakfast. We also had the bit of Jordan late drama at the start of the morning, just to add to that. We, we also, um, before we got on the train, and it, it's, you know, there, there aren't many trains to that part of the world, so we sort of had to be specifically on that train um, in order to get there, because it's a factory, it, you know, it's got a schedule, doesn't wait for anyone. You were potentially late. You weren't late, but again, it was, I think, producer Ben had a slight heart in mouth moment when you text, going, I can't find an Uber. No, they kept cancelling on me. Do you have a bad rating? No, it's really good, my rating, but okay. I don't know why. I, ju- I should have just got on the tube, but I had my bags with me and that, didn't yeah. I? Well, never mind, there anyway. We but we got there in the end. It's, it's happening very soon, Gene Divas. The book is, is coming. We've held it physically in our hands. <laughs> and the book. And we... <laughs> You're so obvious. <laughs> You're so... Don't laugh at that, Ben. Oh, come on. Everything's a Sorry. bloody innuendo. No, that, where was that? How was that an innuendo? Anyway, uh, the book is available to pre order now, sexandmindboss.com forward slash book. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmindboss.com or you can write to William Hanson, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury cards with executive cell seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. Um, How was your little weekend in Devon? Oh, it was great. Yes, it looked lovely. It was really good. Um, Especially I, those trainers. Oh, well, I've got so much shit for those trainer, trainers. They're hocker. They're a good brand, them. They're my, okay. running, they're my running trainers. No, they're just very chassis. And Donna, who's... At, place our friends who I went to stay at Donna yeah. and Bobby's they were like bring your trainers because we'll go for a walk so um but it was great we went went for a meal on the um Friday I mean pub I'm up four or five Guinness deep oh you and get so we're okay with Guinness now oh back on it <laughs> oh, I'm falling back in love oh it's, Phew. it's oh, because your whole identity flashed before us because Maraid yes. yeah she she heard me talking about that had gone off Guinness yeah m- my Irish friend Maraid shock with that name 
<laughs> and she was like, here, come come see me. So I went up to see her in North London. She's from Southwest, is she? She took me in the <laughs> roughest Irish bar you've ever seen, like proper rough. And this, she said, the Guinness in here is great. So I had it and then we got really drunk on it on a Friday afternoon. Um, Devon was great. Thanks for asking. Good. Back on the Guinness, but at four or five, hey, that old scone thing. Oh. Ugh. So Did you like, get it wrong? Chatting to a few at locals. If only you knew someone that could have told you the right way. And we are having a laugh. And I'm like, hey, is it you lot that put your cream on first or your jam? Is it your jam or your cream? <laughs> and I think I said something as I was down in the dregs of my pint. Does it matter? <gasps> oh, my God, oh you could have heard words. a pin drop. It was like walking into Blackburn with your Burnley shirt on. <laughs> it's not good. Honestly, one bloater at the bar like, who are? I think it's time you left, young men. Yeah, but no, you don't you don't get it wrong. I mean, David Cameron, when he was on the by-election trail, did, was I can't remember whether it was in Cornwall or Devon. Serious? He did it the wrong way. It literally cost them the by-election, basically. Did it really? I, I think so. They there's, get very cross. There's more going on in the world. Well, are you, but not in Cornwall and Devon. They have an, a, a sort of a fairly extremist group that come and tell you off, the, <laughs> the URA. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you. Ooh, all right. I love the handshake and look on the poor Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, a double handshake. For that. A double handshake. Double okay. handshake. The ooh, all right. So, uh, etiquette expert William Hansen. Yes. In Devon, they put the cream on first, then the jam. Correct. And then in Cornwall, they put the jam on first and yes. the cream. But you're saying, as an etiquette expert, what is the correct way, Devon or Cornwall? Well, if you're obviously in Devon, do it the Devonian way. If you're in Cornwall, do it the Cornish way. Oh, get off the you have so many splinters on your ass. If you are not in Devon and Cornwall, you can do it whichever way round you like because it's just a scone. It doesn't flip in matter. This is your whole... It doesn't matter how you pick a fucking bag up. No, no don't it be stupid. Matter how no, you don't be, no, don't I'm be stupid. I'm sorry, but you can't say that. It doesn't matter how you eat an olive, but you've made, bloody, so, you've made a living off how thing. We could say that about literally everything you say it doesn't matter it doesn't well, it matter does. how you use a fork so in... it doesn't matter if you lick your knife knife well it does when you chop your tongue off so i would i would say if you want to be scientific about it with the cream and jam some people have said if you have a more savory tooth you prefer savory food having the cream on last so that hits the roof of your palate first people prefer that whereas if you have a sweeter tooth you put the jam on last so that is the thing that hits the your palate first. So it is personal preference. Some people go, oh, it's impossible to spread jam on top of cream. Others say vice versa. So you do it whichever way around you want. To be diplomatic, because as you know, I like that fence. What I normally do is that I do one half of the scone, jam, then cream. The other half of the scone, cream, then jam. Oh, okay. What you don't, however, do is you don't put jam on one side, cream on the other, and sandwich it together like a burger. Okay. No. You put butter on it? Absolutely not. Not unless there's no cream available. Oh, okay. Sometimes put butter on. Uh, Okay. Speaking of teas and scones and Mm. stuff, I'm really into Earl Grey at the moment. Is that fancy? Well, well, it's not that fancy. I had an Earl Grey in Devon. Did you have it without milk or with? With milk. Oh, no, you're not meant to have Earl Grey with milk. I thought you are. No, slice of lemon in the summer, pips removed. Uh, or... Oh, I've always had it with milk. No, it's too weak to have with milk. I mean, some people like it, and again, personal preference. Does it matter? But correctly, you have it without milk. No, it's nice with milk. A bit, bit of sugar in Have it. you tried Lady Grey? No. That's sort of slightly fruitier than What's Earl Grey. What's Earl Grey? What's in it? Tea. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a light type of tea. Maybe I'll do the history of Earl Grey uh, for an etymology. Oh, okay. But not this week, because we're not doing How it. was your week in Venice? Our weekend in Venice, yes. Is it true it just stinks of shit? No. I think in the summer, um, but most cities, when it gets really hot, London can smell a bit pongy. Drains in Magaluf are known for being bad. Right, exactly. That. So, I mean, I'm sure during the summer, we weren't there in summer, we were there in October, obviously, but we did not smell anything. It, it smells salty, like like you go to the beach, or sort of seafront, and you get a sort of a, a waft of mm. fish. We were running the other way but that you get you get a hint of something but i wouldn't say it stinks no did you go on a gondola <laughs> a gondola oh, we did do a, a gondola which is steered punted by gondolier gondolier is the person with the stripy oh gondola. did you go on a gondola no, that's, what I was asking. <laughs> that's what i go back to my original question <laughs> No, we did not. Did you go on a gondola? So what, the, no. bo- the boat's called the gondola? 
Okay. Yeah. I've never been to Venice. Oh, it's I've lovely. I've never been to Italy. It's so romantic. Oh, what? No. Do we need to take you to Italy? I thought, I thought I might have gone as a kid. I think we passed it on boat. <laughs> well, that... I'm know. going to be controversial here. I'm I think f- there's a hierarchy of the three major European holiday destinations. Italy, top draw. France, good. <laughs> Spain. Hey, you know Spain's my favourite country. Mm. Yeah, but you haven't been to Italy yet. No, I, like, I do like carbs as well. Oh, <laughs> go for a bit of gnocchi. And I do like a nice suit. Right, well, Italian tailoring, British tailoring, different, but anyway. Uh, t- Italian tailoring's a bit uh, baggier, isn't it? No, no, if anything, it's more fitted. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. I prefer that. Mm. So you anyway, had a good time. we had a lovely time. I mean, you can t- obviously in Italy, well, and in France and Spain, obviously they all eat a lot later than we do in Britain. They do in, yeah. Yeah, but you could, I mean, I, I, most nights we'd sort of, we'd have um, dinner and then go for a walk around Venice to see it at night because, again, it's, you know, pretty day and night. And you'd go past all the restaurants and they'd be like, oh, do you want to eat? And show you the menu and like, no, I'm so sorry, we're English, we've already eaten. Uh, it's what we kept saying to everybody. And it's only about 8.30. Yeah. But yeah, far too, far too late for us. It's the same in Spain. The kids, like, they've got school the next day and it'll be 10 o'clock at night and they're all having the main meal. We were in bed for after Emmerdale. <laughs> Maybe they, it's because they don't have Emmerdale in, That's in what Spain. It is. That's, That's why probably people go to bed earlier. Do you know earlier. what they need to do? They need to play the Emmerdale theme tune across the country. <laughs> because when we used to hear the end of, I think, it, no, it would have been start of Emmerdale, seven o'clock when we were like kid kids, and you used to hear the Emmerdale theme tune. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Do you know what gives me the worst anxiety now? What? Heartbeat theme tune. Oh, really? Because it's Sunday. Sunday. Mm. Oh. But you, I was allowed to stay up to watch Where the Heart Is. Where the Heart Is? Maybe when the grass is greener. Who was in that? Moving on the light, I know. I was born here, something, something. Where the heart is. Sarah Lancashire was in it. Oh, was she? Was it Peggy that died in car crash, the nurse? I had to sleep in my mum's bed that night, all mortified. <laughs> I think it was Peggy. Oh, where the heart is. Oh, it's great. It used to be on on a Sunday. Okay. Monarch of the Glen. Never watched, uh, never watched it, but again, I had the similar... If, if Monarch of the Glen was on, it meant basically nearly bed on a Sunday. Yeah. So that was my... That was the Irish one. Scottish. Oh, was it Scottish? Hence Glen. Oh. Yeah, Heartbeat. I've never watched it. I hated it. It's, it's very popular da, da, show. Da, 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 Heartbeat. We've done this before. Have we? Okay. <laughs> Five years, what do you expect? Anyway, we had a lovely time in Venice. It was very nice. Do strongly recommend going. It's not cheap, I'll be honest, but uh, as a place, even restaurants, you know, are, are expensive, but it is beautiful and you've got to go and see it. How before, much was a brew? Before, a what? A brew, a cup of tea. I don't coffee. think I had a cup of tea the entire time I was there. A coffee. Uh, well, it depends where you go. Three, Coffee and three pastry. euros. Oh, oh, I didn't have a pa- no, I didn't have a pastry. Had a cannoli. What's one of them? Uh, it's that sort of pastry that's absolutely oh, yeah. filled with cream. Mm. <laughs> mm. I love them. Yes, I'm told. Are you worried about bed bugs? No, but I bet you are. Yes, I've ordered some bed bug traps. <laughs> what the hell? We a, don't have them. What the hell's a bed bug trap? But, surely they're too small. No, no, no. It's just like, it's like a box. It's quite a thin box that you, in between the, the bed frame and the mattress, you sort mm-hmm. of put down the side and it's got some sort of scent they're attracted to, to. So if you've got them, they'll go into the box. And then obviously if there's at least one in there, you know, uh-oh, we've got a problem. I don't think we do have a problem because we hoover the mattress, we spritz it with Dettol uh, every month. We How do you change spritz the bedding. it with Dettol? That one you get the Dettol bottle. The, which one? And you squeeze it. No, the Dettol that you got me for my washing. Oh, you could use that. Yeah, that's fine. What? Because I don't want to... Dilute wanna, it, I probably would. Yeah, but I don't want to bleach my bed. Well, that's not bleach. Dettol spray? Yes. Any sort of antibac or disinfectant. Oh, okay. Mix, mix it with a bit of water, probably, in a, in a spray bottle. What about method? Uh, well, if it was method antibacterial, then it would be okay. Okay, I'll do that. That's what I would suggest everyone doing. Okay. Although I am told that bed bugs are not... Because I thought bed bugs... I thought, oh, we won't get bug, bed bugs because we're clean. And there isn't a correlation. No. Like, you know, there is a, other things. It's if you're dirty. But actually with bed bugs... They used to say that about nits at school. They go for cleaner. It's like, well, it ain't because, bless him, he stinks. <laughs> oh, that smelly kid now at our school has done really well for himself. Has he? Yeah. What's he doing now? 
running his own haulage company. He's done oh. really well for himself. That's nice. He, he stunk at school. He absolutely stunk. Now who's laughing now? No, he's done really well for himself, bless him. Um, with bed bugs, I forgot what I was going to say, sorry. Don't let them bite. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on. Well, I'll keep you posted. Once these traps arrive, I think they're arriving to today, actually. So when I get home, I'll put them down the side of the beds okay. and I'll update you next week if we haven't. I mean, if, if we have any next week, I'll probably be, my house will be on the market. Okay. All right. Thanks for keeping us updated. Pleasure. Um, Your week we... all right? Yeah, good. Oh, shit. I've not told you about Kevin, have I? I've not told you about Kevin. We need to talk about <laughs> Kevin. Yeah. My cat. What? Have you got a cat? Well, kind of. Do you remember that cat that ran me out? He's not your cat, is he? Well, he, <laughs> the other, a few weeks ago, um, I put out a little bit of milk for him. And I don't know if you should do put out a little bit of milk for him. So I see him every day now. And you've called, called him Kevin? Yeah, I just thought, Kev, he looks like a Kev. Might be a girl. Has it's, he got a gut on him? Uh, no, he hasn't. He, but he comes in and he comes in out. And he's like, oh, hello, Kevin. Yeah, and night now we're in garden i was stroking him on saturday morning when i was out having my coffee and a fag and um he comes in kitchen oh he's our little describe friend. kevin for us what sort of cat it's the cat he's like he's patchy he's quite cute now i, I don't mean this any offense to anyone my grandma included i'm not a cat man never have been but kevin slowly but surely but what color me over white brown and black patches tortoiseshell yeah mm. He goes very well with my Ray-Bans. <laughs> Why have you put your Ray-Bans on him? I don't. I just don't. I oh, thought it'd be it. funny. Oh, my sunglasses are broken. I've got to go and take them to get fixed after this. But yeah, I've got a little... So he's like, I like it. I kind of look forward to when he comes in now. That's nice. Welcome to your 30s. Yes. Yeah. Catman with the milk tray. Never thought I'd have a... With the milk tray! <laughs> oh! You're that on is fire full, today. That is full circle. You're on fire today. You literally are the milk tray man. Uh, also, <laughs> before we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week, the amount of DMs I've had from people sending me jolly jokes because they don't want this feature or segment to die. So thank you very much. I'm not going to kill it, just sort of put it out to pasture. No, it's fine. Uh, cue the jingle. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Cha cha cha. Beth Hinby sent me this one. Okay, Beth, lots riding on this. She says, I've got a joke that I found really funny that I think you like. I asked my boyfriend how Cleopatra got her skin so soft, and I'll tell you the punchline after the break. Back to milk again, aren't we? <laughs> Okay, Jane Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it's time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week, and thanks to Beth Hinby on Instagram for sending this one. Really good. So I asked my boyfriend how Cleopatra got her skin so soft. He replied she bathed in milk. So I asked him to run me a bath of milk. He said, would you like it pasteurised? I said, no, just up to my tits. <laughs> That's good. I laughed. I'm laughing. It's not the strongest, but it's funny. It's better than some of the other ones. Can I just say, keep them coming in? Um, because, but just be careful, like, some I can't read out, even on this podcast. Kieran sent this one. I once bought a dog from a blacksmith. I only had five minutes when he made a bolt for the door. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go on to the listeners' dilemmas? Yeah. Um, this is a nice short one from Vicky. Hi, William and Jordan. What is appropriate when requested to wear something colourful to a funeral? Thank you. Vicky. Ah, oh, so, okay, so traditionally you wore black for um, funerals. And I think on an etiquette etymology a few months ago, I, I explained the history of that. Uh, it's because black were, basic was ex very expensive. So to interrupt, you also um, went through your funeral wish list. We have. What yes. was that called? Your, and your will. It was in yeah, your my will. will, yes. I ain't got a will. Have you not? No. But you've got a house right or a flat. You need to get a will. Do I? Yeah. Where, and you have to put in that you leave everything to me. Yeah. I think you'll find. I'll do it now. You know, you know I, I don't know. <laughs> writing on the bottom of your script... Leave to Wendy. <laughs> I'm called William. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan North. Yeah, that would not stand up in court. I will contest that. Oh, God. You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> Excuse me. 
Mr. Liar, speaking down to me, you snotty nose cow. <laughs> this is in black and white. Our Jordan said I could have it, and I'm going to have a little house in London. You try telling her that. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. So, yes, some people like, uh, they request before they die, that uh, people wear colours and it's not a depressing funeral, it's a sort of a, it's a celebration of life and everyone to wear a colour and be happy at the funeral. As I have said before, I don't want that for when I die. I want people to be absolutely gutted I'm gone. So I want people to be in full black, Jordan started already, I want people to be in full black mourning, crying, wailing, really having a terrible time at my funeral. However, I have been to funerals before where the deceased has requested people wear a colour to me, and this is just my view, a funeral is a funeral. I would feel very odd wearing bright yellow, bright orange, bright, bright blue. But equally, I do want to respect the wishes of the deceased and not sort of stand out like a sore thumb. So my suggestion to this is purple. A darker purple, and then it's a little bit of a colour. What about navy blue? Mm, yeah, fine. Navy blue, purple. I'd just wear a black suit or a dark suit with a colourful tie. Yeah, but I, I still would find, I personally would find that odd going to a, yeah, I would, uh, sure. a funeral. So again, purple. We wore Burnley ties for my uncle's funeral. Did you? Yeah, that was quite Were nice people day. crying? Yeah. Especially they were all Blackburn supporters. God, we're not bloody psychopaths. No. But yeah, or maroon. Maroon's another option as That's well. That's what Burnley colours are technically. Claret, well, there we it? go, yeah. Uh, but no, Vicky, I hope that one helps. This one is from Soph. Hi, William Jordan, EPB and Diego. This weekend, my old boss popped over for a cuppa. In preparation, I bought a packet of posh biscuits to have with our tea. When she arrived, she presented me with a packet of equally posh biscuits, and I suddenly panicked. What's the etiquette here? Which biscuits do I serve? Do I open the packet from my old boss, or should I have opened my packet and offered them? It's plagued me since they left. Thanks, Soph. Uh, I'd say a bit of both. Yeah, like, well, have some of mine, have some of yours. It's very diplomatic. Yeah, or you're back, you're back on my fence. Or maybe open theirs, I'd say, so it doesn't seem rude. Well, I would say, I mean, I've said, I'm sure I've said this before on this podcast. Any sort of gift you bring over to somebody's house, whether it's going around for a cup of tea, whether it's going around for dinner, it is a gift for the host, and it's up to the host to decide when to open it. So you shouldn't bring a bottle of de Bonnet, a bottle of wine, chocolates, thinking, oh, I'll eat that tonight when they open them. It is, the moment it leaves your hands, it's not your prerogative anymore as to when you open them. So if I personally think in this instance, it doesn't actually matter what you did. Um, as long as you infuse, oh my gosh, they look absolutely delicious. Can't wait to share them with Mikey tonight, for example, or, or whatever. I mean, I don't know why Mike is in your house, Soph, but you get the, <laughs> you get the idea. That would be fine. And if you've already got your biscuits on a plate ready to go, why bother opening the other packet? I don't think your boss would, would really care. But if you do want to be diplomatic, as Jordan suggests, do, do a bit of both. Those biscuits you got me, when did you get me them? Oh, those Toffle Offers ones. Oh, what are they called and eat them? Toffle Offers. Toffle Offers. Yes. What was it? Um, Fortnum and Mason, we'll just say Oh, it. were they? Fortnum and Mason Toffle Offers biscuits. In the tube. Yeah. Oh. Are the best biscuits. Oh, my. They make days. excellent gifts. They're really big, chunky biscuits as well. Oh, they were so good. Yeah, I give them to everyone. They were so good. I can't have biscuits in those. No, I can't. I, and I especially can't have those. I, I did do half a tube in a day once, which is quite... Did you do a full tube? Oh, my God, you did, a, you did the full tube <laughs> of left, 20 biscuits. I left two. Oh. I left two. They are wow. good, though. It was a Sunday, and I, weren't, I was having a sober Sunday, so I thought I've got to have one vice. I had like a pint of milk with it as well. Oh, yeah, wow. Mm. Have you, have I bought them for either of you? Okay, I'll bring some in next time. I oh, we bring me ones. some as well. All right, fine. Thank you. I was in there the other day, but I've been in for ages, actually. Anyway. You've been every day. You're there more than Queen. Well, you are now, because she's dead. But... <laughs> no, the Queen is not dead. We now have a new Queen, Queen Camilla. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, this one is from Alice, and Alice is an assumed name on this one. Dear William Jordan and executive producer Ben, brackets, EPB. This is handwritten, by the way, handwritten letter. Uh, I hope this letter finds you well. I'm writing because I find myself in a predicament and I'm not sure what to do. Recently, a good friend of mine celebrated their birthday. I would class them as a close friend, having known them for quite some time. I know they usually have some sort of party to celebrate every year, and having asked well enough in advance if they would be organising something for this year, I was told they weren't sure, but if anything was arranged, I'd receive an invitation. 
the weeks went on and I didn't hear anything, so I didn't think anything more of it and assumed nothing was happening. The day of their birthday comes around and I bought them a gift, like any good friend would, wished them well via message and went to work as normal. That evening I returned home from work and have had a brief scroll through social media, only to discover to my horror that said person is having a massive night out and I'm not there. There are too many people attending for it to be an uncoordinated, unscheduled or surprise party slash night out, so I can only assume it was entirely planned in advance and I didn't receive an invitation. I'm normally quite good at sweeping these things to the side and just moving on, but I can't help but feel especially hurt in this situation because they are a very close friend and I was previously told I should be there should anything be organised. I'm not sure if I should address this issue as I don't really want to cause any tension or risk damage to our friendship, but I just cannot help feeling annoyed about the whole thing. They are completely oblivious at this time to my feelings. Uh, on the matter. Should I raise it with them or just let it go? I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this. Best regards, Alice. Oh, Alice. Alice, I can understand why you are upset, especially because you were told you would receive an invitation. However, something has clearly happened that we don't know because of the information we're going off that means that the host, however bad it was of the host and I'm not on the host side here, that you weren't invited, Alice. That so what's harsh. gone on? And probably what I would do, let's say you had a birthday party, I hadn't had an invitation, I saw it on your social media, and then I wouldn't, I would probably send you a message or phone you, or I'd see you like in four days' time anyway, and say, is everything all right? Do we need to talk? Have I done anything to annoy you? And I probably wouldn't let you leave the room until you had told me. That's probably what I would do. Yeah, but Alice sounds like me. She doesn't want to, she sounds like she doesn't really want to confront it mm. then what would you do i think you probably should because it's gonna it's gonna eat up it's gonna eat you away mm. yeah it's gonna so i think you should definitely speak to friend and say oh is there a reason why i wasn't invited it could be something innocent like oh i thought you were working that day or yeah but even so i mean i sometimes you like, it's like i think you need to speak you invite to people anyway even if you know that they can't attend it's just nice to have an invitation also alice sent this on the 20th of july so it's probably been sorted by now <laughs> anyway can yeah. we start getting better with these come on Sim. excuse me people are That's relying on us for advice she sent this on the 20th of july yeah. alice has probably sorted it out by now excuse me i have a big backlog I beg your pardon. I have a big um, backlog. Alice, I think you should uh, sort this out. Like, speak to your friend, definitely. Yes. I, I think you should address it. And Alice, if, as Jordan says, because you wrote it in, at the end of July, uh, life has got back to normal and there is a resolution, please let us know what it is. Help at sexedmyboss.com. Okay. Email in, I suggest. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I'll be on it. <laughs> yeah, because then we'll, we'll take it. Um, the, the other option is just as we, I know with our own mailbag, I mean, I'm going to go out here that maybe Alice posted, Alice's friend posted the invitations. Maybe it didn't arrive in the post. But equally, I'd follow it up with a, did you get my invitation? This next one is from Dan. Hi, William Jordan, EPB. I have recently come back from a holiday uh, with my family to Spain, where we were accompanied by my 84-year-old wheelchair-bound and deaf grandmother. Oh. One day, whilst lounging by the pool, Nana decided she wanted to swim. Will you take me on holiday when I'm that age? Oh, we'd be so cute on holiday together when we're older. Really? In our little wheelchairs. <laughs> well, we may not be in wheelchairs. Well, Ben can push us along the beach. <laughs> and Adam as well. <laughs> and self-shoot Alex can film us. Yes, in his wheelchair. <laughs> mm. Nice. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, not being able to get herself in the pool, my brother and I assisted. Satisfied she was in safely, I returned to my sun lounger while he joined her. Having been in the pool for only a matter of moments, she slipped and went under. Being in a wheelchair, you can appreciate my concern at seeing this, especially seeing the look of horror on my brother's face when she re-emerged. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Nana's on holiday. <laughs> Thankfully, she wasn't injured, but it became apparent that one of her... <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, she wasn't injured, but it quickly became apparent that one of her breasts had slipped out of her swimming costume. <laughs> oh, As you can imagine, age and gravity have not been kind to her. <laughs> 
and now her spaniel's ear, no apostrophe, was in clear display to everyone else by the pool. <laughs> I don't know if we should be laughing at this. It's not funny. Blissfully unaware that she had acquired a new flotation device, <laughs> Nana continued to paddle about as if nothing had happened. Seeing that my brother was clearly in shock at the sight and avoiding eye contact, I tried to get her attention by saying, Nana, your boob is out. Yes, I was just going to say, get a female, get another girl to say it. Well, this is from Dan. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, oh. being in the pool, Nana had taken out her hearing aids and so she couldn't hear me. I had to say, Nana, your boob is out three times and by the end, everyone in the vicinity had heard. <laughs> Nana, your boobs are... Your, your boob, your tits... Your left tits! Your left tits hang it out! Luckily, she noticed and casually slipped it back in. <laughs> what is the proper etiquette for making someone discreetly aware of a wardrobe malfunction that you cannot get their attention? Kind regards, Dan. Dan, I mean, I'm sorry we laughed. At Dan, I'm genuinely sorry we laughed at you, you Nan. No, but I think Dan, Dan probably knows it's quite funny, which yeah, is why Dan's written does. in. Yeah. Um, um, you did what you had to do, Dan, in the situation. Uh, what, what is and also, this? I don't think your, your grandmother minded that much because she just sort of tucked it back in and, and continued. I don't think it's that much of an issue for I, her. I think you've got to do it. I was listening to Miriam Margulies' uh, second book, audio book. Oh, yes. And she was saying that um, it's, it's not like a memoir. It's more like funny stories and observations. Mm. She said that you should always tell people. I was at a meal just yesterday with mate Seb. Tell me more. And there was lots of people there. And mm. I had um, yoghurt down my chin. And he just went, mate, you've got yoghurt down there. Instead of doing the whole thing, just tell him. But Miriam Margley said, a woman, this beautiful woman once got out of the uh, ladies' toilets and there was a queue of ladies and she still had a dress tucked into her knickers mm. and toilet paper stuck to her high heels. And she just walked past this queue and Mir Miriam went, stop! <laughs> Ran up to her and this woman like grabbed both her hands and had tears in her eyes. I was like, thank you. I was about to walk out in the restaurant to my husband and would have been embarrassing. So I think you should. Yeah, I think most, peop most people would rather know that they have something wrong. I mean, the etiquette normally, in, if you're in a restaurant and let's say you had yoghurt or tomato sauce in the corner of your lip, if I, if I was sitting next to you, I'd obviously just tell you mm. um, quietly. But if I wasn't sitting next to you and I needed to tell you, as I'm sure you know, it's done by eye contact. Yeah. You just sort of look and with your napkin, just dab the corner of your lip. And that's correct. That said, you can use technology for good. I had a thing a few weeks ago as a, a friend's... Mm, how would you say to him, you've got a bit of... No, I wouldn't say, you just sort of make eye oh, contact okay. and touch your lip. Okay. I, the other day, was at a friend's, we'll call the friend Bob, and I noticed we're all standing around having drinks in the kitchen island, around the kitchen island, a very nice house, having uh, drinks, and I noticed that Bob had his flies undone. Now, obviously, I did not touch my flies and look at him in the eye because the evening could have gone another way, but what I did was I went to the loo, Bob had a smartwatch, so I text Bob, and obviously it had pinged up on his wrist, he had checked his wrist, and by the time I came oh. out of the loo... Flies were done up. You see, I disagree with that. I come in the other day and you said it to me. Like, where I'm from, you just go, you're flying. You well, go, and what you're did flying. I say to you? You said, you what? You said, you're flying. You, you're flying. Is it not cold? And then you go, oh, it was a bit nippy. I thought, sorry, you make a little joke like, oh. Uh, I said, Jordan, The cage is open, but the beast is hidden, something like that. Oh, my God. And I don't do that. You actually. need... <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you need to say... I just said what? to you, Jordan, you need to review your flies. Review your flies. Just say you're flying or your flies are undone. Anyway, I think, Dan, you did the right thing with your nano in her boobs. Yes. Have you got any pictures? Oh, no, that sounds That's weird. weird. I think we, we don't like that, that. but you won't take pictures. Poor nano. This is from Lauren. Hi, William Jordan, EPB. My dilemma is about the receiving of cards and gifts at birthdays. Face to face, my usual response to someone giving me a card or gift is normally, oh, you shouldn't have. Thank you very much. That's very kind. At the time of writing, it's my birthday tomorrow and I've had a couple of family members ask for my address so they can send me cards and gifts and I never know what to say. As a child, I was taught not to ask for gifts from people as it was rude. So my automatic response was, oh, don't worry, don't, get to don't go to any trouble. As giving them my address felt like I was asking for gifts even though they brought it up. However, after sending the reply, I'm now wondering if it came across as ungrateful and wondered what I should have said in this situation. Lots of love, Lauren. Oh, that's a great question, Love Lauren. it. William Hansen? Yeah, you can say, you just sort of do sort of faux protesting, give the address and say, oh, you really shouldn't, but if you want to, here's the address, thank you so much in advance. However, even if you say thank you so much in advance, that does not replace a thank you after you've actually opened the card or present. Okay. 
Because it is a, when someone. Says, I mean, you don't need to thank for a card, but if it's if there's money inside, obviously you do. If there's a present, you should thank. Yeah, you just say, oh, you don't have to do that because it would be then. Yeah, you don't have to do that. No. Mm. What would you do? Would you agree? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd say, oh, you don't have to do that, but it's uh, here's my address. <laughs> I'm in it this time. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll leave it with the neighbours. Yes. Yes. On some, when you send things now, you have to sort of ask for a safe space. There's Sometimes. still one company. Which, safe place, sorry, not a safe space. There's still one company that still don't leave it and it's so annoying. Just leave it on bloody doorstep. Well, not if your doorstep's on front to ev- on show to everyone else and yours is. Yeah, if it's nice. secreted round the back, as it were, that's okay. No, because then Kevin would probably piss on it. <laughs> Kevin the lovely cat. Kevin the cat. Well, I don't know whose cat it is, it's one of the neighbours. Does it have a collar on it? Don't know, I'm not looked. Well, next time you're stroking it, have a look. Yeah, I think it does, actually. He winds next door's dog up, which is funny, because next door's dog does me head in. <laughs> what type of dog? Barks. Yeah, what type of dog? They all do. One that... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, come on, do one more. Do you want one more? Okay, final one. This is from Anonymous. Dearest William, Jordan and E.P. Ben, I'm a deputy headmaster and line manager of the pastoral leaders at a secondary school. Last week, my head of year seven, who is a God-fearing woman, had a dilemma. A student in her year group approached her to tattle on another child, who we will call Charlie. Grass. He is a fairly innocuous child who had brought a sonic screwdriver into school and who was messing around with it in several lessons, pretending to be the great Time Lord himself, Doctor Who. What's the sonic screwdriver? Well, it's what Doctor Who has. Oh, and what's the other one? That the a Teutonic child. What does that mean? Uh, innocuous yeah. child. Um, a child of no particular note. Oh. Someone who coasts. That's a bit harsh. You know, you don't remember them because they're academically wonderful or super polite, but and you don't remember them because they're. You well, know, tell him that snitches get stitches. The telltale child felt this was a distraction to her learning and asked the year leader to do something about it. The head of year agreed to follow this up. Later that day, she confronted Charlie and asked him to produce the screwdriver, which would be kept in reception and collected by his mum. The head of year was ready to remind this boy that we are not an institution of show and tell. Uh, Those carefree days of primary school are now long gone. To her horror, he produced not the Doctor Who fandom memorabilia she was anticipating but instead a vibrator. (laughs) To the boy's credit, it did light up. I'm not altogether sure why this feature was necessary, come to think of it. How innocent is that girl that she didn't know what it was, to be fair? I don't know how how old the boy was either. You probably didn't know what a vibrator was. Year seven! Yeah. Now, this God-fearing woman in her early 30s was standing in the middle of an English block with the Year 7 presenting an object of a sexual nature. To make matters worse, the corridor then erupted with bodies. Two Year 11 lads stopped and simply stared at the head of Year before crumpling into balls of hysterics. Eventually, she grabs a tissue. Those good old-fashioned blue paper towels which solve all ailments Mm. and takes the phallus into her ward. She then decides I'm the best person to solve this pickle of an interaction. I told her to phone Charlie's mother. My advice was to be cautious and a little vague with mum. Just to say it was an item which may belong to her has made its way into school and needs to be collected. Jesus wept. That phone call did not go well. Mum was initially confused and then, when the penny dropped, became rather defensive and stated it had nothing to do with her. The item is still in reception a week later. I'm thinking she's probably just bought a new one. So, did I give my head of year the right advice? Yours most sincerely, Anonymous. Uh, I think you did, because you could say there's a, an object here that you need to pick up and then she'd be mortified when she got there. But yeah, I I think she did. That's got to be the weirdest thing that's been handed in at school. Yeah. <laughs> a dildo, a mum's vibrator. I reckon we're going to get a letter in a couple of weeks saying, help, my son took my vibrator <laughs> to school. <laughs> I mean, the good news is, Anonymous, you've made the receptionist life. Uh, because now that that thing hasn't been collected... Well, not just that. That story's going to go around other schools. Yeah. That'll spread. The place will be a buzz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is mental. <laughs> that is absolutely mental. I, yeah, I would... If, if you could reverse the clock, like Jordan suggests, there's an object that doesn't belong at school, could you please come to pick it up, mm. rather than going into detail... Why did he, why, and did the year seven girl think it was a doctor? Did the kid know what it was? Who knows? I hope not in year seven. Maybe he genuinely thought it was a sonic screwdriver. I would have known in year seven. Which, well, yeah, but you were, you. Mm. I want to ask you a question, but it's something you're never meant to ask on broadcasting. Year seven, all I'll say is year seven, and if you're listening now with kids, you really shouldn't be listening with kids to this podcast. Yes, we'll just give you a moment just to turn, turn it off. turn it down, because really... 
year seven, all I'll say is, did you still... Oh my God, you're not meant to say that. No, no. <laughs> I still do now. Did you? Yes. In year seven? <laughs> yes. What year was your own when you... <laughs> Is it wrong if I say lower six? What's, th- what's that? No. Uh, year 11? Year 12. Year 12? You're joking. How old would you have been then? 17. Oh, you what? You winding me up. You were having a laugh. I was... Oh, to be fair, I'm thinking of... Now I'm thinking of Austin, my little nephew. He's in year seven. He's in year seven. Is he in year seven already? Yeah. In wow. year seven? Mm. He's like <laughs> that high. He probably still wouldn't know what... Yeah, come to think of it. I think I was in year six. Were you? Yeah. Our Ryan told me. I'll never forget. I was flicking through Match magazine. Right. And I was, like, talking about what water for Christmas. Okay. What happened? Was it a sonic um, screwdriver? No, it was. <laughs> it was horrible, our Ryan, at times. Imagine yeah, I... telling year six that. Anyway. Right, what are we doing? What's coming up on the weekend release, Jordan? We have another edition of Etiquette Explained. Oh, my favourite feature. Uh, remember, if you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast, we do have a favour to ask. Follow the podcast and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all our new releases. Leave us a rating and a review. And number three, share the episode with someone who might love it as much as you do. As we're about to finish now, please, as long as you're not driving, get your phone out and share this episode with someone you think will like it. Uh, and remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextedmyboss or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self-seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website sexandmyboss.com. See you on Friday. See you on Friday.